thanks so much for being here. Um, again, my name is Tamara, and I'm here to tell you about a project we've been working on at Princeton, uh, together with Games for Change, on nuclear risk and nuclear disarmament. Um, I work together with uh, Professor Alex Glaser, who's also here. Um, and as a team, we've been very grateful to uh, Games for Change for bringing us and our work into this really um, inspiring uh, community of games for social impact. So the project has um, sort of two major parts. Uh, one is dedicated to helping governments, researchers, and students cooperate on these issues. And one is dedicated toward engaging the wider public in conversations about the past, present, present and future of uh, nuclear weapons in our world. So today I'm going to be primarily telling you about the first part of the project, so our work on um, the government-facing component, which has been our focus for the past year. Um, and essentially, we're using VR as a space to uh, connect communities and tinker over creative ways to unmake nuclear arsenals. Um, and we do this primarily through designing and simulating uh, verification solutions for future treaties. Um, and I'll, I'll go into more about that. So you may be asking why work on this now? Um, aren't nuclear weapons just aging relics of the Cold War, no longer relevant to today's um, peace and security challenges? And the answer is yes, <laughs> and in that, that's exactly the problem. Uh, nuclear weapons are old and deteriorating, and governments around the world are therefore embarking on these large-scale modernization programs um, geared to rebuild them and advance their capabilities in ways that are provoking competitive behavior that is sort of eerily reminiscent of past arms races. Um, so there are currently approximately uh, 15,000 nuclear weapons still in the world today, um, the majority of which are in the United States and Russia. So here's a visualization our research group made uh, for an art exhibit um, last year using real nuclear weapon numbers, locations, and targeting strategies. Um, and looking at this, um, I personally think we all deserve to ask the question, um, is this really the foundation upon which we want to base um, international relations of the future? Uh, the rest of the video is online, but I can tell you the, the ending is not, not good. <laughs> Uh, you also know that the U.S. and Russia are not the only players in this space, uh, with a history of smaller countries embarking on their own nuclear weapon programs, uh, further complicating the already tenuous um, strategies of nuclear deterrence. Uh, so this is a, de a device quite benignly known as the peanut, um, but which, based on North Korea's last nuclear tests, um, could potentially be over 10 times more destructive than the bomb used against Hiroshima in World War II. So the good news is that there are steps we can take to build progress in the direction of reductions and disarmament rather than a renewed um, global nuclear arms race. And one of those steps is answering the question of how states would be able to verify that parties to future disarmament treaties are actually complying with the agreements. Um, and if they cheat, how such cheating could be both detected and ultimately deterred. So uh, the project um, and the question that we seek to answer and which we are trying to contribute to through our government-facing um, VR effort is this. So how can we trust that nuclear weapons are being destroyed without learning any information about the weapons in the process? So for perhaps obvious reasons, um, states do not want to reveal um, the design and sometimes even location information about their weapons. Yet under any treaty process, um, the international community will still need ways to ensure that nuclear weapons are actually being irreversibly eliminated. So what that translates to in terms of solutions is this rather elaborate dance of equipment, shielding, putting cameras and people in creative places. Um, and trying to figure out how to do it most effectively and efficiently um, to build that trust that weapons are being eliminated without revealing sensitive information. So more good news is that VR gives us a space to develop such solutions in ways that would be much more difficult in reality. Um, shockingly, weapon states aren't super willing to allow universities to play test treaty solutions with real nuclear weapons. So. We build them in VR, 
And here's a quick set of clips of the space um, that um, together with uh, Games for Change and other partners that we've built over the past year. So essentially what we can do with this space um, is we have built virtual representations of new verification equipment being developed by universities and labs, um, and we can actually drag them into these representations of nuclear weapon facilities. So the example you see here is a device designed at Princeton to tackle the problem of determining that an object presented is actually a nuclear weapon without having to um, reveal measurements or take it apart. The inspector only sees a green light or a red light to indicate that the weapon is real or if it's fake. We also have a virtual radiation model running in the background to be able to simulate types of measurements more realistically. And the space um, is a two-player networked experience. So there you see um, my colleague in just a second up on the viewing platform. Uh, together, uh, we're demonstrating a part of a treaty inspection where an inspector might come to a facility, randomly select a weapon directly from a delivery system. Um, in this case, it's a nuclear submarine to have greater certainty that the warheads being sent for disassembly are in fact real. So what you see here is a missile casing being, you know, unloading um, the weapon and certain parts of the process would have to be shielded, but the inspector would maintain a line of sight on the object to the greatest extent possible. Um, so when they come off the missile, you can containerize the weapons um, and perform measurements um, that would be designed under um, any given inspection configuration. So this is part of what we've been working on is how to, you know, fluidly manipulate equipment um, between players and, and use them intuitively. We also initially struggled with how to move players and equipment through our virtual nuclear weapon world since things like chain of custody on objects under a treaty are very important. And we eventually came up with this map system that allows players to send or escort players or items between the various sites. And one thing we definitely want to use the VR space for is testing unconventional verification approaches. And here you see um, an approach called disco verification, which is used to prevent tampering with camera footage. Um, the dancing is not required, but encouraged. So ultimately, the value of VR um, to us as a space is where we can have the freedom to try out new ideas, test them through simulations, um, and communicate them to different audiences. So this year, we've sought uh, to do just that. Uh, in May this year, we took our two-player HTC Vive setup to the United Nations in Geneva. So diplomats that were part of the Conference on Disarmament and the UN Group of Governmental Experts on Disarmament Verification had a chance to try out practical solutions to the problems that they rather endlessly debate. Um, they did things like template measurements, random selection exercises like you just saw, and even dealing with the infamous peanut. Um, and overall, the goal was to show them how VR can be both a space for thinking and creating, but also for communicating um, the fact that the problems we face are not intractable and that there are real and available solutions. We've also been happy to be able to use what we've built um, so far with our undergraduate students at Princeton. Um, they actually, um, this past semester, came up with inspection protocols under the framework of the newly negotiated Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which was um, adopted at the UN last year and is um, undergoing a process of entry into force. Um, so in teams, students uh, designed and, um, and implemented their inspections uh, through this networked VR setup. Um, they were very patient with us, given that um, they had to work with a beta version that still had quite a few bugs, but um, I was grateful that a number of them commented afterward that the experience gave them an understanding and even ownership um, of the issues in ways they felt they wouldn't have had otherwise. So we'll be moving forward uh, with this effort both in our classrooms as well as in seeking out government partners over the next months to engage in VR exercises that will hopefully help um, further the extent of available solutions for future treaties and in doing so show that nuclear disarmament is not an impractical ideal but rather an achievable reality. And the last thing I wanted to mention um, with my time echoes the announcement that Susanna Pollock made this morning, um, which is that 
We're now ready to expand beyond the work we've been doing um, to engage governments and also to engage the public, which of course is a crucial actor for change. Uh, so together with Games for Change, um, Archer's Mark and Atlas, we're hoping to create um, a VR and AR experience that communicates uh, today's nuclear risk landscape um, and what we can do about it. So including by engaging um, voices from civil society um, that have been sorely lacking uh, from the nuclear decision-making space, which tends to happen only at the highest levels of government. Um, but because ultimately this is an issue that affects everybody, we think the conversation around the issue should be and can be much more transparent and activated than it currently is. Um, so I'll end there. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I believe I have a couple minutes left for questions, if there are any. If not, um, happy to talk offline if you think of more later. <laughs>